Rugrats Go Wild. Now, you may not understand this if you're one of my younger viewers who wasn't around when Rugrats Wild Thornberries were on, but when this movie came out, it was a huge deal. Seriously, this was like our generation's version of Batman vs. Superman or Avengers Infinity War. Now, Nickelodeon had some crossovers with their shows before, but never to the scale. Rugrats and Wild Thornberries are also very different shows, so it doesn't seem like a totally obvious crossover, and it doesn't seem like it would work. But, surprisingly, it kinda does. Though the events of getting them to cross over are a little contrived. They basically use the first 20 minutes to rip off Gilligan's Island to have the Rugrats character shipwreck on a supposedly deserted island that, when you know it, the Wild Thornberries characters also happen to be visiting. But once the characters meet, you realize how similar they really are. Angelica is very similar to Debbie, for example, and seeing Angelica get bossed around by someone else for once is kind of oddly satisfying. Having Spike be able to speak English after he meets Elias is a fun idea, and they got Bruce Willis to voice him, and Bruce Willis is really funny in this movie. And surprisingly, he has some singing chops too. One of the funny scenes in this movie is when he meets a leopard, and rather than being scared of this wild animal, instead sings a song teasing her about being a house cat, because to him, all cats are the same, which ticks off this leopard even more, and it is an absolute treat. The other songs in this movie are also pretty fun. It's not necessarily a musical, because I think there's only like three songs in this movie, but they're all pretty fun. And of course, as always, Tim Curry is a delight, but in this film, even more so. This character has a head injury that causes him to act like a little kid for most of the movie, and it's hilarious. Just picturing Curry in the recording booth acting like a three-year-old is a funny mental image in and of itself. Now, like I said, the beginning that kicks off the events to get these two shows to cross over is a bit contrived. And also that leopard I mentioned earlier, she's a threat for part of the movie, but then just kind of forgotten. You think she's going to go hunting for the babies so she can eat them, but then she never really shows up again. I was hoping Tim Curry would return normal and face this leopard down while he protects the Rugrats, because that would have been an awesome way to have the movie, but eh, she's just kind of written out. Well, despite those problems, this movie is delightful and is a treat for the Nickelodeon fans. Rugrats Go Wild for me gets an A, a 9 out of 10, and a 4 out of 5 stars.